Hello and welcome back. In several of the previous lectures about cloud computing, we have looked at service model based variants of cloud computing. We looked at infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and uh, software as a service. Each of these variants can be deployed in different configurations, which is what we call as deployment model for a cloud platform. And this gives rise to some variants of uh, these deployment models. We will be looking at the first one, which is public cloud in this lecture. So in the subsequent files, I'm going to look at some of the characteristics of public clouds. So let's go over those. In public cloud, services are available to general public, that is you and I, for subscription for a fee. That is anyone who has the credit card, let's say, can go to the portal of the service provider, public cloud service provider, and register for a particular service. And public cloud can be offering different types of uh, service model variants of cloud, as we saw earlier. So you could have a public cloud which is offering infrastructure as a service, or another public cloud could be offering platform as a service, or yet another one could be offering a software as a service. So in that sense, all these variants of service model clouds can be offered as a public offering, public uh, cloud offering, which can be subscribed by general public for a particular fee. And these services are very easy to obtain and it's usually very fast to subscribe to such services. All you need is, as I said, uh, to go to the portal of the service provider and provide some contact details, etc., where they will probably call you back and they verify your identity and allow you to access the services. Compare it with the case where you yourself have to procure the infrastructure. Let's say if you are trying to set up a website, you may be required to first procure the necessary hardware machines and then install the operating system on top of it if it didn't come with the hardware pre-installed and further make sure that it is up to date by applying the patches and so on and all of these things take time and on top of it you will have to have the skills and resources who are going to set up all this infrastructure for you and all of this is taken away from you all these responsibility of managing the underlying stuff and procurement etc are provided to you as a service somebody else has done all the procurement and you just register for the service and the person is going to hand you over the machine. Let's say if you are looking at a virtual machine kind of a subscription. So in that sense, it is very easy to procure the services from a public cloud. The benefits of public cloud comes mainly because of economies of scale, which the vendor is leveraging. So the vendor, since he gets the resources in bulk from the hardware providers, let's say, when he is setting up his public cloud infrastructure, they certainly get some advantage in negotiating better costs. Whereas if an individual entity like you and I try to buy some hardware or even software licenses, we may not have as, as much of a negotiating power to get a better costing for the, for the products that we buy. So in that sense, a public cloud vendor who is buying in bulk so that he is going to serve uh, several of the consumers, so they have, the vendor has a better negotiating power with the hardware providers or other software providers. So in that sense, this cost gets eventually passed to the consumers. And another important point is that there is certainly a optimization of services because the cloud provider is going to give dedicated focus on making sure that those services are up and running. In that sense, you get better services than what you would have got if you yourself managed the whole thing on premise. So let's further look at why somebody would want to use public cloud services. As I said, mainly the point here is that it lets you focus on your main business value that you're providing. It frees you from the responsibilities of other non-functional stuff, non-functional here in the sense that procurement, let's say, of hardware or software licenses and making sure that that software is working properly and updated and so on and making sure that your computers are protected from external threats or even physical threats like fire and flooding and so on. A public cloud vendor has dedicated some effort particularly to address these kind of issues. Similarly, 
the hardware and other infrastructure is managed by the cloud provider as we have seen in uh, previous variants. So in that sense, it helps you reduce the cost, which as we saw gets eventually passed to you as a consumer of the public cloud service. And also you can procure the processing power or storage or whatever services you're trying to procure in a on-demand fashion. That is, you don't have to go through, let's say if you're a typical small to medium enterprise, you may have your procurement cell to which you will have to raise a requisition that you want uh, a desktop of so and so configuration let's say and they will go and contact their supplier all of these things take time whereas in case of a public cloud you all you need is a quick registration on a website of the public cloud provider and you get your virtual machine with the similar configuration and you can start using it and in case you have tried the exercise that we discussed in one of the previous lecture for infrastructure as a cloud I'm sure you would have noticed it doesn't take as much of a time to obtain a virtual machine on Amazon Web Services. So in that sense, your procurement is very easy. And similar logic goes for other types of cloud variants such as PaaS or SaaS. And it also leads to easy scalability. Easy scalability because you can now quickly add more resources in case your application or your uh, the software that you're trying to deploy in case that needs more processing power or storage you can very quickly obtain it because it's more of a on-demand offering and in a self-service fashion and the costing model is also very flexible you pay for what you use there is no upfront cost for uh, investing in the required skills for system administration let's say in case you are going for a pass it is particularly true for pass and SaaS that all your hardware and uh, software maintenance costs of the basic platforms they are handled by somebody else you are focusing on your actual application coding and development so in that sense your resources are not wasted and you just pay for what resources you are actually using in your applications. These are some of the chief reasons why it makes sense to go for a public cloud. Some of the vendors we have already seen uh, Amazon Web Services uh, in one of our previous lecture. It offers to general public several services, for example, core infrastructural services like EC2 for compute resources, S3 simple storage service for storage needs and elastic blocks block storage and similarly route 53 for dns etc and also has some specialized services uh, such as rds relational database service simple db etc cloud watch for monitoring all your cloud instances cloud virtual machine instances and other services that you may have taken subscribed to from amazon and rackspace is another uh, vendor which offer very similar uh, services Yet another set of vendors and they fall in uh, platform as a service category. Google App Engine is one and uh, App Engine is a platform as a service offering. It offers apps like we saw Google Sites, Gmail, etc. So that's software as a service. Similarly, it has recently started offering uh, storage and compute as well, which is infrastructure as a service. And similar is the case with Microsoft Azure, where you can hire infrastructure as a service uh, in the form of virtual machines and other cloud services for platform as a service and so on. So that's pretty much it for public cloud. In the subsequent lecture, we will look at uh, private cloud and several other variants. Thank you.